40 years ago, I created a suit, but it was dangerous. So I hid it from the world. My assistant, Darren Cross, he became obsessed with recreating my formula. If this technology gets out, it's going to be chaos. Scott, this is your chance to become a hero. I need you to be the end man. I think our first move should be calling the Avengers. I've, um, I've binged a lot in your performances right. over the years and in the last decade when I'd be watching, say, The Game or right. Black Rain again, it's often come into my head, how come he's never done a superhero movie? Was it that the timing wasn't right or schedules or you didn't feel comfortable with it? Nobody asked me. That was it. No, I uh, I would have I would have loved to. Uh, we were saying, especially my buddies uh, Danny DeVito, Jack Nicholson did the Penguin, Jack did the Joker, and I, they said how much fun they were. And I said, well, you know, here I am. And maybe it was I was too immersed in kind of reality and, and contemporary pictures. But uh, when Marvel came to me um, with this one, and my son just didn't even let me finish the script, just grabbed me and said, you got to do this. Uh, but I was ready. I was, I was excited. Um, yeah, it's sort of like the circus, you know? It's, uh, it's, wide, it's wide open, it's a lot of fun, all these special effects, the, the magic that exists. Uh, so it was everything I'd hoped for and more. Did you see it as an extension in any way of the risk-taking that you've done during your career with roles, like saying Falling Down or Basic Instinct? Right. Or... Um, yeah, I guess so. I mean, most every role I've taken, the part of the joy has been the excitement of um, flying without a net, you know, saying, well, this doesn't fit in any, you know, safe uh, area, you know, I hope, I hope they're going to like it. Uh, but I knew I was in good hands. I mean, if you're going to do one of these type of movies in the Marvel world is where, where you want to be. They, they're grounded in, in great concepts. Uh, Ant-Man's a heist movie basically a very elaborate heist movie um, and you know the track record's impeccable so I, I knew it'd be great uh, Paul Rudd was not my first idea of, of a superhero uh, but neither was Robert Downey uh, you know so uh, they, they they have a very good casting eye did the level of humor in the script surprise you in the right hands, the relationship between man and suit is symbiotic. The suit has power. The man harnesses that power. You need to be skillful, agile, and above all, you need to be fast. You should be able to shrink and grow on a dime. So your size always suits your needs. Now dive through the keyhole, Scott. You charge big, you dive small, then you emerge big. Yes, um, in the script and what was brought uh, to the uh, the screen. As, as you know, um, Edgar Wright was involved initially, and and I think the, the design of the piece, uh, visually and everything, is still a lot in his hands. But Paul came in and uh, did some rewriting too. Uh, many of you may know him from Anchorman. He's he's, he's very funny, and so that increased a lot. Uh, I would say most of the humor was Paul's. Um, he had a lot of the great uh, Capra lines. I carried on with the exposition and plot line. Um, but between him and Michael Pena, who also um, let, was let loose, uh, a smaller part, which was just continually extended by how good he was. The level of fan interest in this, has it surpassed anything you've worked on previously? It was absolutely in terms of, uh, of pre-release. I mean, to, to be in a movie where this huge audience is already, uh, has an idea of what the picture is about, uh, um, our, our big fans, I've never been anything you know, quite like this. It's almost like you hope you won't let down their expectations that they have of, of Hank Pym. Uh, but so far, it looks like it's going okay. I know a guy. Scott, I've been watching you for a while. You're different. And I believe everyone deserves a shot at redemption. Do you? You 
you've produced a lot of films yourself over your career, going back as far as One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. As an outsider coming into the whole Marvel Universe, what do you think the challenges are for these movies in the years to come? Well, I, I, I think if they're lucky enough to have a producer like Kevin Feige, who is overseeing all, all of these um, uh, Marvel pictures, um, you're having a better handle on it. You know, we basically, when I wasn't filming, um, I would go to the other units uh, they were on the other stages. So, for instance, the first unit was for the principal cast. Then you had your stunt men and your stunt action. The second unit, your third unit, was your special effects. And then your fourth unit was that macro photography, that angle from the uh, ant's point of view, which is really spectacular. And the ability, you know, it's all storyboarded, but then the ability to know how to tie this all together. Secondly, what Kevin can do and and what I think Marvel does in particular is they they it, they lay out the big picture and then in post-production they they begin to shape it and hone it in. So the script may change. They allow themselves a period of time for reshoots and they find out what's working best. So it needs somebody with that type of, uh, that vision and that kind of organization to make it all work. In terms of vision, I think you'll have to defer your career decisions to your son in future. I am. I'm counting on him now. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much. Nice interview. Nice appreciate Stay it. Home. Thank you very much. Appreciate the interview. Scott, I need you to be the end man. to change the name.